Hello there everybody, Bunna here, and welcome to another video showcasing 10 more tips and tricks in Ark Survival Evolved. With the ongoing success of the first two videos, I figured we'd keep the ball rolling and continue the series forwards. Some of these tips are very broad and impact your general gameplay experience as a whole, while others are much more specific. If you find this video enjoyable or helpful, then please support the channel by doing all that standard YouTube stuff. K okay, thanks! Tip number one, getting rid of that pesky swamp fever. Have you ever been playing Ark on official servers and immediately run into an infected player or dodo? Why am I even asking that question? Of course you have! Outside of Rust, Ark has one of the most toxic online communities to ever exist. A lot of these players get a huge kick out of spreading their unnamed virus of 2020 onto other unsuspecting players. Now one option is to build your survivor around your modified attribute points, but curing the disease is an option that a lot of players would rather take. Crafting lesser antidotes in Ark is a process more difficult than performing nuclear fusion, so what option does that leave you? Well, did you know that you could simply transfer off of the current server you're playing on to completely remove the Swamp Fever infection from your survivor? Simply travel to a supply drop, obelisk, or other transporting terminal structure to transfer to a different map and receive the most affordable healthcare service that Ark has to offer. Once you're cured, you can simply transfer back to the server you were playing on to resume what you were doing. Just make sure that you remember the name of the server that you left, as otherwise... You're gonna have a bad time! Tip number two, gas mask protect against swamp fever. While we're still on the subject of swamp fever, I figured I would throw this one in here. Did you know that if your survivor is wearing a gas mask, it's completely impossible for your character to contract swamp fever? Not only does it provide protection against the airborne aspect of the virus, but also the physical aspect. Not even blood splatter or being directly bitten by a diseased leech can spread the swamp fever to your survivor, meaning that you can safely enter someone's swamp fever-ridden shack without the worry of contracting the disease that you never asked for. My god, if only college students knew about this. Tip number three, cryopods are a godsend. With the release of the Ark Extinction DLC came the introduction of cryopods, one of the single most useful and powerful items in the game. Cryopods are small, tech-like storage containers for your tames that allow you to cryogenically freeze them for safer storage or travel. The cryopod can then be thrown back down at a later time to release your tame back into the open world. Think of a cryopod like a Pokeball, but without the branding or risk of a lawsuit. Well, alongside this core functionality are a few added bonuses that you may not have known. When a creature is kept inside of a cryopod, it gains an additional 5% base passive experience, in addition to stacking XP multipliers. The amount of experience they gain upon release from the cryopod is solely based on how much game time has passed since cryopodding, multiplied by their idle XP rates, and multiplied again by a final 1.05 return. This means that cryopodding and storing dinos not only conserves a lot of space and food, but can also be quite efficient for leveling up tames in the background with virtually no extra effort. Did you also know that stored creatures will not count towards your tribe's total tame limit? This is because technically speaking the cryopodded creature is no longer a part of your tribe and therefore isn't included within the cap limit. Did you also know that placing cryopods inside of a refrigerator will essentially have its rate of decay from 30 days to 60 days? This can be a really solid storage alternative if you haven't yet acquired the level to craft a cryo fridge, or simply don't have the resources to do so. Lastly, uncryopodding a creature will cause it to instantly shit its guts out, although this doesn't seem to work with every creature in the game. It is a very convenient way of acquiring snow owl pellets, though. Thank you, Jesus. Tip number four, wooden cages are incredibly useful. During your playtime in Ark, you may have just simply buzzed right past the wooden cage engram, thinking that it only applies to PvP scenarios or Ark fetish roleplays, but in fact it can be an incredibly useful asset to keep on hand. Wooden cages can be used alongside a grappling hook to quickly trap smaller creatures for easier taming, such as Dun Beetles or Hesperornis. Wooden cages are even useful post-tame, as they can be used to contain certain creatures that must be set on Wonder to take advantage of their full functionality. On servers without building restrictions and collision disabled, wooden cages are even more versatile, as grappling hooks aren't necessary and the amount of creatures you can trap heavily increases. For instance, you can use the wooden cage to trap large fish such as <laughs> large fish such as coelacanth or saber-toothed salmon. Jesus Christ, why did I write the line like that? Anyways, you can use the wooden cage to trap the large fish and then use a fish basket to capture them. As an added tip, honey can be used to lure the fish closer to a terrain surface so you can place the wooden cage down on top of it. Additionally, wooden cages can be used to trap alpha raptors, which makes killing them with ranged weapons significantly easier. In the early game, this can be an extremely viable method of acquiring additional levels and better equipment for your survivor. Tip number five, rafts are incredibly useful. A lot of players buzz right past the idea of using a raft in the early game, but if constructed and used properly, it can accelerate your progress exponentially. I would highly recommend sinking the foundations on your raft in order to fully protect the underside of it from enemy players, while also giving you more visibility while driving it. This can be done by placing down a pillar, followed by a foundation next to it. 
The foundation will typically snap to a lower point each time you do this, but if it doesn't, you can always just pick up the foundation and try again. Once it snaps to the correct spot, you can pick up the pillar and snap it to the center of the foundation you just placed, then snap another foundation off of that to a lower snap point. Repeat this process until the foundations are sank to just beneath the floor of the raft. Having a mobile base fully loaded with all of your essential crafting stations is incredibly convenient and makes acquiring certain resources much easier. For instance, gathering oil, crystals, and organic polymer is significantly easier with the ability to drive right up to the shore and harvest it, not to mention the extremely large storage capacity that can be achieved on a raft. Not only that, but Wildcard has still never fixed the meshing issues surrounding boats, so burying your raft inside of a terrain rock or map border ensures that another player can't take your resources while you're offline. That's not to say that I condone meshing or exploiting, or that another player isn't just going to simply blow up your raft anyways, because they certainly can and would, but the option is there for those of you who would choose it. Raft raiding bases has been a thing on PvP servers since they were first introduced, and can trivialize what would first appear to be a difficult raid. A very common build for this is to make a small chamber of thatched ceilings and walls extending off of one side of your raft. Then you can drive the chamber up to the enemy's base and sink your thatched wall end panel just inside of their outside wall. This will allow you to safely approach and position the C4 on their outside wall while effectively avoiding all of their defenses. Now it just so happens that my game was completely bugged at the time of recording this and wouldn't let me play C4 anywhere in the open world, so you guys will just have to settle for this realistic reenactment. Do it. Raiding like this is typically a suicide mission, but allows you to conserve a lot of resources and take on bases that you otherwise couldn't at your current stage in the game. Is this bullshit? Absolutely! But it's been in the game an incredibly long time, and even if you don't plan on taking advantage of it, it's helpful to know about it so you can at least try to prevent it for your own sake. Rafts can even be placed on top of lava to act as protective platforms, which can be especially useful near the entrance to the Overseer fight on the island. Wait a minute. Tip number six, Equus are amazing creatures. Did you know that- <coughs> Oh, man, my throat is getting dry from all of these incredibly well-structured and useful tips. James, would you mind tagging in for this one? Of course, it'll be my pleasure, Bunner. And when it comes to tips for both new and returning players, I agree with your choice to highlight the Equus. The Equus doesn't require a saddle to ride it, but crafting a saddle will give this creature some other unique abilities. A mobile mortar and pestle may not sound like much at first, but combine this with the 50% weight reduction for carrying stone, it makes crafting cementing paste a great option for early game, particularly on scorched earth where cementing paste is much more difficult to come by. The rear kick of this creature is powerful enough to destroy wooden spiked fences, and it's also powerful enough to knock out some of Ark's biggest creatures without the use of narcotics. Combine this with the lasso that you can craft on its saddle, you can even drag some of these small to large tames away to a safer place. It's one of Ark's many useful creatures that's often overlooked, but cheers Bunner, I hand it back to you. Oh, thank you so much, James. Sometimes my voice just can't handle all of this amazing information, but I'll try to keep the ball rolling. For those of you who are interested, James runs an amazing YouTube channel called Complete Games that I would highly recommend checking out and subscribing to. There's a link in the description down below to make navigating to his channel that much easier. Tip number seven, building with ladders and third person mode. Are you tired of constantly struggling with Ark's clunky building system and lack of innate snapping for certain objects? Are you fed up with trying to neatly place down your crafting stations only to realize that Mr. Magoo could have placed it straighter? Well, lo and behold, one of the most powerful building tools in existence, the ladder. For only 14 easy payments of $29.95, you too could own a ladder. ArcVC is not responsible for any damages, injuries, incidents, accidental deaths, or unexpected pregnancies that may occur using this vertical ascension device. Side effects may include constipation, diarrhea, projectile vomiting, additional limb growth, testicle growth, string bean nipples, erectile dysfunction, hair loss, migraines, swamp fever, all of the cancer, hangnails, vaginal mesh surgery but you never had the surgery, sneezing, coughing, and spontaneous combustion. Ladders have an odd function in Arc, as when you begin to climb it, your in-game camera will perfectly snap perpendicular to the foundation it's attached to. Combining this with Arc's in-game third-person orbital camera mode will essentially lock your camera and prevent accidental rotation of an object, while still giving you a perfect view of how you're placing the structure. The easiest method I've found for pulling this off is to attach the ladder to the outside of the foundation that's facing towards the direction you want to place your object. Next, equip the structure that you want to place onto your hotbar and begin to climb the ladder. Press the corresponding hotbar binding that you have the structure on to see its bounding box and rotate the camera downwards until the object is nearly touching the bottom of the ladder. This is because when we activate the third-person orbital camera mode, the object will appear farther from your survivor than it does in first-person mode. Then simply hop off the ladder or climb over the top of it to regain omnidirectional control of your character. You can even use the up and down keys while in first-person mode to position the object closer or farther away from your character without having to worry about accidentally rotating your camera. 
When you're comfortable with the position of the structure you're trying to place, simply press your primary action button twice to place the object down. If you happen to accidentally rotate your camera when you press the primary action button the first time, simply cancel out of the placement and reset its orientation using the ladder again. Once it's placed, make sure you exit third-person mode to inspect your work before the 30-second timer is up. Magic. <laughs> Tip number eight, pick up tames. Did you know that you can use the Argentavis to pick up and hold smaller creatures to make taming easier? Technically speaking, this will work with any of Ark's tames that are capable of picking up other creatures, but Argentavis are typically the best choice because they deal no damage to the creature upon pickup, thus you don't have to worry about becoming spooked or losing taming effectiveness. This pickup method does work with slightly larger creatures, but you'll probably have to have a tribe mate help you out. Also, if the creature's aggressive, it may try to eat your ass out the whole time you're holding it. I'm talking about my ass! The Argentavis really begins to shine with smaller passive tames, though, as when you use its secondary pickup ability, it will hold the creature in place even when you dismount it. No, no, don't eat it, you big feathery fuck! This means that you can solo tame some of the more difficult passive tames in the game with little to no struggle. You could even opt to fly the thing back to your base before beginning to tame it. That way you can ensure that you're safe from enemy players, hostile creatures, and environmental hazards. Tip number nine, grappling hooks can save your stuff. It doesn't matter if you're a new player or a veteran, dying is a very common and sometimes necessary thing in Ark. Oftentimes this can lead to your body being left in a really awkward position with seemingly no way to retrieve your loadout. Well, did you know that you can use a crossbow and grappling hook to grab onto your body and pull it out of the dangerous area? This tactic is incredibly useful in PvE if you happen to die in the lava or near hostile creatures, or in PvP if you happen to die near another player's turrets. Fair warning though, this trick only works if your body is still intact, as if it's been consumed then only a loot bag remains. Mastering this skill can be vital to salvaging the equipment in your loadout, and ultimately the success of raid attempts. And finally, tip number 10, Snow Owls for Blood Extraction. With the introduction of Bloodstalkers and Desmodos into the game came a whole new demand for blood packs that no one wanted or expected. Given how many blood packs are necessary to tame higher levels of these creatures on official servers, you're going to want a resource-friendly, reliable, and steady method of acquiring your first supply. Luckily, this is where the Snow Owl comes into play. The Snow Owl's Encapsulate ability can be used to very quickly and efficiently heal up your survivor between blood extractions. While it doesn't directly speed up the process given the syringe's cooldown, it certainly saves a boatload of time that would otherwise be necessary to heal up between extractions or to spawn between deaths. Just make sure that you have some food to eat between heals, as the Snow Owl's Encapsulate will rapidly drain your character's food. As an added tip, you can extract blood from both yourself and an unconscious survivor at the same time, then simply use the Snow Owl to heal everyone in the area simultaneously. This can essentially double, triple, or quadruple the rate of blood extraction depending upon how many unconscious victims you have and how efficient your clicks are. And here you thought all of those unconscious bobs lying on the beach couldn't serve any purpose. <laughs> Help me! <laughs> and that about wraps up this video. Thank you so much for watching! If you enjoyed, then please be sure to leave this video a like down below, subscribe to the channel with notifications on to stay up to date on all of my latest content, join the Discord for a community of like-minded woodland creatures, and please keep leaving me comments because they warm my little bonnet heart. Thank you again so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.